Hey guys, it's me again. So, um, I think I've come up with a design solution for that locking tab. So obviously, if you've been following the series so far, you know that um, in the last episode, we did a functional 3D print of this and it worked perfectly, which was really, really awesome. But the only concern I had was um, the locking ability of the gears. So if you know at the moment, we have obviously the gear components inside of the blade. So if I just show this first, um, All right, cool. So if we look at this design here, you can see that this gear at the front here has teeth that go into the teeth on the blade like that. And that's what pushes it in and out. So at the moment that was all, well, in that last episode, the teeth of this gear was the only thing holding this blade out. So if we had enough force or enough impact on the tip here, um, it actually caused a, uh, a pattern of rotational force through the gears which in the end would result in the linear gear, this one here, actually snapping off at the, uh, the screw attachment. So obviously we needed that secondary lock system. And so I have come up with a design for one. So you guys have obviously been offering your ideas, which is awesome. Uh, that's really what I want on this channel. I want everyone to be, you know, throwing their ideas around and we can all bounce off each other. And um, if one's really good, for sure, I'll give you guys a shout out. Um, but I think, a lot of them, it wouldn't work in the way that you guys imagined. So I think I've finally come up with a design that will function and will work properly, um, which is really exciting. So what I'll do is I'll show you first. Um, if we come over here, so if you guys know, um, obviously the wheel sits back here, but there is a kind of like a piece up here that the the elastics loop around before they attach to the string and the string obviously comes around the wheel and through this uh, thin gap you can see there. So I've actually used this um, as the the lock engage I guess you could say. So this piece actually slides back and forth like that. So keep that in mind because that's going to be pretty important when I explain the rest of this design. So if we get rid of that now we can actually see what's going on in here. So if I just get rid of some of these, okay, cool. All right, there we go. So, all right, sweet. So let's have a look in here. So what we have is a sliding piece there, which I'll show you now. So you can see that if we grab this, it moves back and forth. So that is what I was moving before when I was holding this piece here. You can see that moves back and forth within this channel. And then what we have here, is a pin attached to that sliding piece that I just showed you. We have a pin that's mounted to the base component and then we have a locking tab. So this is actually the secondary lock and you can see that this uh, swings down like that. So obviously when this is down, it's going to prevent um, this blade from coming in because it's going to hit that lock like that. So if we just orientate this a little bit better. Yep, all right, so you can see that's going to hit there and that's going to stop the blade from coming in. Now the key and why this was so tricky was that we needed this lock to disengage before any movements actually happened with the gears. So that was the main issue and with a lot of the designs you guys suggested, um, that wouldn't be possible and we would actually have gear movement before the locking system would disengage, which means that you would essentially like it just wouldn't move because the gears would bite because the, the blade isn't able to move in and out freely. So with this design here where the string is pulled, obviously you have about five mils of room between here and here. So in that initial pull of the string, it's going to pull this first before it actually starts rotating the gears. And that means that it will pull this lock out the way uh, before the blade is pulled into position. So how that's going to work, let me reset this. You can see if I rotate this lock out, I probably need to make this a little bit bigger, um, but there will be a piece on this corner that sticks up. So you can see how, if we just go flat here, you can see how between this corner and this corner, there is about a mil or half a mil um, that sticks up above this edge. So what that means is when you slide this back, bam, this corner, is going to hit this corner and as this keeps moving back it's going to force this 
out of the way so that it can pass by like that. So you can see now that this is out of the way and then by the time that's all happened then the uh, gears will start to kick in and then the blade will slide back into the retracted position like that. So that should completely solve our secondary lock issue. Uh, this little locking tab I haven't decided yet. I've put little pins on there um, at the moment, so similar to the OTF one. So they can see that obviously comes through the base piece and it comes through the top piece. If we have a look there, it comes through there. So that's what's going to hold it in position. But I might put a screw th through that just in case um, to make it a little bit stronger. And then here's obviously the slider piece that I just showed you. And that's what will engage and disengage everything. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm hoping I print this and it works, but we'll see. There's always uh, issues with things. So I'm probably going to have to do a few prototypes first before we get that final uh, copy. But this essentially is the mechanism design that I am going to be using or planning on using. Now, if you're wondering how this lock tab is going to spring out, obviously because on the OTF you have a band that runs across the front and that's what pulls it out but with this one what I did is I put a block here so you can see this piece that sticks up and then because we have an elastic between here and there the elastic will be coming across and it's going to be pressing on this surface so that it will push it down automatically so we don't need any other elastics or anything like that um, to cause that to be pushed out the way and then obviously this is going to move that out of the way as well. So yeah, um, I hope that makes sense. I don't know if it does, but I tried to explain it the best I can. Uh, next up, we just got to get this all printed and see if it works. And if it does, then we can do the final product video and um, maybe look into getting one of these machined in metal or something like that, which would be pretty exciting. So yeah, guys, I hope you liked it. I hope you understood what I was talking about. And um, I should see you in the next video, or the next episode at least. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, of course. Leave uh, some feedback below. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next video.